question for you, Aesop. Uh, how the fuck do you make your shit sound so dope? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck you be talking about until like three years later, nigga. How? What's going on, everybody? It's the granddad of granddad, Wooly, and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews, Hip Hop Data. Today we got an album review today, and we'll be talking about the brand new album from a legendary underground MC who've been doing things for many years and confusing motherfuckers for many more. This nigga's back. He dropped some new shit. I've been waiting for this. I know I ain't gonna know what the fuck he's talking about, but I'ma still bump the shit talking about the new album from Aesop Rock entitled The Impossible Kid. Only thing that's fucking impossible was understanding your ass, nigga. Like, I don't get what... It's dope, though, nigga. How do you... Mind fuck. For those who are familiar with Aesop Rock, he is a legendary New York MC. Came up around the mid-90s. He was one of the staples of the now-defunct label Definitive Jux. He's done a lot of work with other people all over the fucking hip-hop spectrum. And he's most recently known to be affiliated with Rhyme Sayers Entertainment. He's dropped some dope albums. Solo album like Skeleton, which is one of my favorites. Like when he dropped that shit, like what was it, like six, 2012, I think? Four years ago, nigga? I don't know. It was a while ago. He also dropped Hell Mary Mallon with Rob Sonic and DJ Big Wiz and even an Uncluded with Kimya Dawson. So over the past few years, Aesop has been busy, but we haven't had a solo effort since Skeleton. So that's what the Impossible Kid is. Now let's listen to this shit and see if it's better than Skeleton because I love Skeleton. That was my shit, yo. So let's see if Aesop then topped the Skeleton. And if it did, well, God damn it, Aesop, I'm impressed. Let's talk about the shit. Now, when I first put on this album, I quickly turned into the production of the album. As you know, Aesop Rock handles the majority of his production on his albums, and he did all the production on this shit. And God damn it, I gotta say, Aesop Rock don't get enough credit when it comes to the producing tip. This motherfucker is a genius. He got beats. This nigga, he be killing on the goddamn beats. And on this album, every fucking track is fire. 15 tracks. Every beat on here is fucking solid, fucking dope, just fucking, mmm, it's so fucking good. And every beat on here has a nice, very dark, chilling, gritty undertone to it. And at the same time, it's got all these fucking elements to it that just shows how chaotic and just how out there and just fucking eclectic Aesop Rock is. He plays with everything from video game sounds to like old school movie samples. And then he also uses a lot of really wah-wah type fucking effects on shit. Just kind of sort of just stretches out sounds and just really makes them really just fucking weird sounding. And on top of that, he puts some really hard hitting drums, some really classic boom bapish style drums on these beats. And it just makes the shit just fucking dope. A lot of head nods, a lot of bangers, a lot of vibers, a lot of fucking, it's just, God damn it, Aesop, you killed these fucking beats. And it's very impressive that he was able to just give every beat its own life and personality. Every beat on this album does not sound the same, but it does have the same tone and theme. And the thing about this Impossible Kid album is really just sort of centered and focused around sort of like if you were inside of Aesop's mind and the chaoticness and the gritty and dark, but yet fucking playful and just out there-ness of Aesop Rock. He kind of just puts all that out in his production and you can hear it, which also makes it dope when he comes in with the raps because since it's his beats, he knows how to fucking go over these beats perfectly and just gel well with them. So it's always good when the producer is also a dope rapper and vice versa because they know their sound well and they can make anything and it just makes it a fucking dope ass experience to hear. So now let's get into these fucking rhymes that I tried to figure out, y'all. I tried, I listened so fucking hard. I, like, I was like, God damn it, I'm gonna figure this shit out. I, I got some shit, but not everything. I, I'm sorry, that shit, nigga, it's impossible, nigga. That's why you named it this shit. I tried, Aesop, I tried. So let's talk about his rhyme game, and the, 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 I need a fucking, you need a fucking Aesop Rock for Dummies book for this shit, included with every album, Aesop. This is fucking, this is ridiculous what you're doing, but let's talk about these rhymes, nigga. Now, when it comes to Aesop Rock's rhymes, like I said, you really don't know what the fuck this nigga's talking about off top. First listen, you're gonna be like, the fuck is he saying? And then the second listen, you can be like, the fuck is he saying? And then like, it's gonna take like 30, 40 listens before you're like, I think I get what the fuck this nigga's saying, but I'm not sure. That's where you gonna be at. But I broke it down as best as I could, and from what I get with the general gist of this album, it's really centered on Aesop Rock personally. This is probably one of his most personal albums. He hits things like just his own mental health, his going to the psychiatrist and how he feels about that, his fucking cat that he called Kirby, uh, shit. 
um, the story when he got tattoos and he talked to somebody at a fucking restaurant or some shit and how it made him feel and dr it's a whole he talks about his fucking brothers growing up in a little league softball game it's like all over the place but they're all linked to Aesop personally in a way and it's just up to us to decipher exactly what he's trying to say with these fucking rhymes and how he's trying to come across like with the song Blood Sandwich he's talking about a little league softball game that him and his little brother, or I guess his little brother was playing, and a fucking mole pops up, and then the fucking coach hits the mole with a bat and kills the mole in front of all the kids, and they're freaked out. And then you got the song Kirby, not like the video game dude Kirby. That's my dude, though. What up, Kirby? But no, his cat named Kirby that he got because his fucking psychiatrist was like, yo, you've been taking fucking meds for 15 years and coming here and shit's not working, nigga. Just gonna get a fucking cat. Try that shit. So he got a cat, and he talks about what it's like having a cat and what it did for him. And then you got songs like fucking Water Tower where he's talking about, I think, a bird that fucking got shot off a water tower then it decomposed on the ground and fucking became... It's some weird shit Aesop talks about. I think I figured most of it out, though. And there's other shit on top of that shit that you just gotta figure out as you're going. But lyrically, he's killing it from how it fucking sounds. He's killing it. And the flows on here are fucking on point. You give it that classic Aesop rock feel. He just rides these beats great. There's a lot of dope scratches in here. He incorporates a lot of different sounds. Like I said, he uses a lot of like old movie samples. Not all the time, but here and there, which actually, you know, lends to the Impossible Kid theme or the Impossible theme. He also uses a lot of different video game sounds, like old school video game sounds, like on the song Lazy Eye has like a little opening sound of a, uh, I don't know what game it is, but you know it's old as fuck when you hear this shit. But he just incorporates all those elements of Aesop Rock's personality in this album. And he's pretty much on this album by himself. This album is just Aesop Rock. There's no features on here. There's no title features on here, at least. He does all the rhyming, all the hooks, and he carries this album so fucking well. And this album is fucking amazing. And there's not a song on this album that I don't like. Production-wise, flow-wise, songwriting-wise, Aesop killed it on everyone. And this is just, like, I think Aesop just channeled in, tuned into himself, really just closed himself off and focused by himself. He really didn't worry about outside forces. He just went into his head and put out a dope fucking album. You really, really have a lot to dig into and figure out. So it's one of those Aesop Rock albums, just like Skeleton or any other album, that you have a lot of replay value because as you go and listen to it more, you figure out more things eventually. And in a good three to five years, by the time the next Aesop Rock album drops, you're gonna figure everything out. That's why the nigga spaces him out so well. He gives you like four years to figure this shit out. And as soon as you figure it out and feel accomplished, this nigga drops another album and says, nigga, figure this shit out now. And you're like, God damn it, Aesop. I hate all right, I'm going to do it. So that's what this album is all about. I mean, it's just about Aesop Rock, his personal struggles and demons he figures he's figuring out, life pretty much, how we should go about life now at this point. And you just see that within these records and within this album. And that's why it's just so damn dope because he gives you both those sides, that really eclectic, out there side. But also you do get that sense this is Aesop Rock just really expressing himself in so many different ways. Now, you know I gotta give him a top five tracks and God damn it, this was the hardest decision because all these tracks are fire. So my top five is like, if this whole album's fire, if you walked in that fire and then you discovered another fire that was just as intense as the fire you was in, that would be these five tracks. So my top five tracks are Rabies, uh, Tough, Lazy Eye, Water Tower, and Molecules. Okay, so now, now let, let's break them down. Now, now, Rabies, the beat on here is just so goddamn dope, nigga. It's just, it's just, it's fucking dope. It's got this dope, dark piano, like, doom, doom, doom. The beat on here is fucking crazy. The fucking drums on here is crazy. It's just got, I mean, it's just, it's just gritty. It's just dark. And from what I, I think I figured that song out, I don't know. But I think it's got to do with, woods or they in the woods with some animals or a wolf or something and somebody got rabies and he would rather just feed an apple to a deer that's what i i tried y'all i'm sorry but that's what i fucking got from the song but the shit's fire nigga just listen to the shit it's dope you don't need to worry about what it means just listen to the shit your face will crunch it your head will fucking do this move and then you'll be happy that's all that matters next song i like is tough with two f's i guess that means it's super tough i don't know but this beat is really, really dope on here. It's got a nice, but it's also, I think it's got some more video game. It sounds like a lot of video game shit in here. The drums on here are heavy, and I don't know what the fuck he's saying again. I, I tried, but apparently he's talking about shit that's tough. But he's got a, he's got a dope line that says, uh, dumb diggy, bump diggy to the landlord, say get a haircut, hippie. I mean, 
I mean, I guess he needed a haircut at that point. It's like, but it doesn't matter. But the fucking shit is dope, and it, it I don't, I don't know. I'm trying, y'all. This shit's fucking tough with two Fs to figure out. This nigga's impossible to figure out in a timely matter. But the shit's dope. It's a dope beat. He's rhyming on there super clean, and he's also got a dope breakdown on there where they do a little beatbox mix on there. So it's really cool. I like that track. It's just got a lot of layers to it. He got a lot of change-ups to it. And then Aesop is just killing it. I just don't know what the fuck he's saying. I'm going to figure it out, y'all. I'm trying. I'm trying. But that's the dope track. My next track is Lazy Eye. And I like this track a lot. It's got that dope little old-school video game intro I was telling y'all before. And I... I don't know, y'all. Act natural, whatever that means for you. That's all I get. I mean, I guess what he's saying is be as weird as you want as long as you think it's natural. But that's what it means, I guess. But the beat on here is also fuck. All the beats on here are fucking dope, y'all. And it's got this nice little wah, wah sound, I guess, if you want to do it. A stretched out guitar sound. And it's just got a real dark, gritty undertone to it. I like this track. I like the fucking this vibe of it. And I like the hook on here where it says act natural, whatever that means for you. And it's got a super fresh, and it's also got a Chuck D voicemail built into there. So that's points for that, because who don't love Chuck D? It's Chuck D. Come on, son. So, yo, got to check that one out. Definitely one of my favorites. The next track that I like was Water Tower, and this is another dope track. And there ain't no rules on the Water Tower. It's just a real, just like, hard-hitting track. It's got a nice guitar on here, nice electric guitar on here. And this is the one where I think... I figured this one out the most. Like I said, it's about a bird that's decomposing and becomes part of the soil and then grows again. And sort of like life, uh, life is death is life. It's actually an excerpt in the beginning of the song that they have in Spanish. So that's what that sort of means in the beginning. And in the second verse of that song, he talks a little bit more on the personal tip where I guess it was a point in his life where he was suicidal or he thought about committing suicide. So he actually, the girlfriend that he was with at the time, I guess she found out what was happening. He got, you know, admitted to the hospital and then he had to go through the whole psychiatric ward shit and all the crazy stuff that happened and, you know, how he felt about that whole situation and how, I guess, what led up to it. So I figured that part out to that song. So I think that's the most stuff that I figured out in a whole song in this album was in Water Tower. But it's a dope song and I guess the theme of the actual shit is life is death is life, and there's no rules on the water tower. So, like, I don't know what that part means, but I guess when you're at that water tower, you're up that high, there's no rules, so you can fall at any time. I guess that's some metaphorical shit. I don't know, y'all. Just call Aesop, ask him, and then see if I'm right. Fuck, I don't know, but shit. So, song is fucking dope. And then the last song I like is the closing track of the album called Molecules. I like the beat on here. It's got a nice little, it sounds like another video game style type track, but especially it's like this. Doo -doo 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 Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, y'all. I tried, but it's got this real, like, it, you hear it when you hear it. Nice bass line on here, nice drums, very dark. And what I got from this album is like, it's pretty much Aesop just giving that final look at himself and saying, hey, you know, my life is not that fucking great. Things have been pretty shitty. So, but at the same time, that shitty life has actually given me a good life because I've, it's built me to be this, this rapper and this really big time underground rapper that everybody loves and respects. But at the same time, do they like me and respect me because uh, I'm a shitty person or I think I'm a shitty person or I've been through some shit? And am I just someone that they can look at and kind of connect with on that level? Or what is it? But So it's sort of like a self-reflection of him. But at the same time, he's like, hey, you know, you can look at me and say, hey, I'm not the greatest of people. I'm not as great as I seem. So you can use. So if you ain't feeling that fucking good about yourself, nigga, I ain't no better than you. I just, I'm just a little bit more famous and got a little bit more money, and I can rap hell of a lot better than you. Other than that, we we, we pretty much even. That's what he's saying. So that's what I'm getting from that song. But it's a dope track. I like the uh the 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 hook on here. He kind of switches it up every time, but I like the vibe and the flow of it. And then he, all, I don't know what fucking Wild Frontier means, but he always ends it with Wild Frontier. But it sounds good. But those are my top five tracks. But like I said, this entire album is clean. It's fucking dope. It sounds really good production-wise, rhyme-wise. And we get a lot of personal stories from Aesop Rock in its own way that you don't get off top. But you will figure it out if you fucking listen a lot. A whole fucking lot. And you won't get everything still. But eventually it'll click unless you're stupid. And then you, I can't help you with that. But I can't, fuck, I can't fucking help you with that shit. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Aesop Rock The Impossible Kid is a super clean, very well put together, very dope album. All I'm saying is that the beats are fucking crazy. They all fucking fire. Aesop is rhyming like no other. He's always on point and he ain't off point on this album, not fucking once. It's very personal at times. 
and the concepts that he uses are very, very unique and to his own style, and he gives you that personality as well as on top of that with the fucking just weird ass shit he fucking does that's complex as all hell, but you still like it, because for some reason it sounds good all together, and it's just a dope fucking album, and I gotta say, I like this shit better than Skeleton. It, it leapfrogs over Skeleton. It's way more focused, way more just tight, and the fact that Aesop is doing this on his own through the whole album, I love that. That's major points because that means he can carry the whole album. Don't need nobody on this shit, and it sounds so fucking good. It's my favorite album of the year right now, y'all. It's number one. I've heard all, all the albums I heard this year. This motherfucker is winning. Fucking dope. You gotta definitely check this out. So all I gotta say is that for me, Aesop Rock, The Impossible Kid, is 100%. Granddad approved. Definitely go check it out. It's out right now. Go buy it on vinyl or CD or iTunes. Shit, stream it. Just, just get it in your life somehow, some way, because you will not be regrettable. Regrettable? I don't know. You won't regret this shit, nigga. I'm telling you, it's fucking dope. Especially if you're an Aesop Rock fan, this might be your favorite Aesop Rock album. It's definitely mine. Top three at least. Shit, Aesop, I ain't got nothing else to say, man. You killed this shit. Um, except for the fact that, um, put a, put like a, a, a fucking, a, a, a dummies book with this shit. Like, package it up. Like, tell rhyme sayers, they be doing all the crazy packages, just put Aesop Rock for dummies. That way we can understand quicker what the fuck you be saying. I, I know why you do it, but sometimes I just get mad at you, but it, it still sounds good. So, what the fuck am I gonna say? So, nothing more to say, right? Aesop Rock, The Impossible Kid. It's granted approved, but you won't get what the fuck he's saying, but you won't mind it, because it still sounds dope. Flip it. All right, guys, we're going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Aesop Rock, The Impossible Kid, if you've heard it. If you haven't heard it, you are seriously fucking up, so unfuck up and go listen to the shit. Beats are crazy. Rhymes are crazy. No, you won't understand what the fuck he's talking about, but that shit don't matter at this point in life. So go listen to the shit, because it's fucking dope, and that's all that matters, if it's dope. And fuck, you wouldn't understand it anyway if you tried. Previous videos on the side as well. It's my brand new single that I dropped today. Yes, I dropped a single on y'all ass. And it's fucking fire. I'm going in, y'all. Y'all thought, y'all better listen to it. Y'all better fucking listen to it. Because it's fucking crazy. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Will reviews twice a week. Gaming channel. Check that out. And I ain't got nothing more to say. So until next time I take my leave. Granddaughter. Aesop Rock the Impossible Kid, shit is fucking fire, but nigga, don't even try to figure it out, because it ain't happening, you don't, years nigga's gonna take for this shit, but it sounds good, that's all that matters, I'm out of here.